seriously, like, people talk. Uh, Pat, I'm Buckeye Sports Bulletin. Uh, I just saw by the, it looks like the top two tight ends to that in Ireland have six catches combined to this point of the year. Uh, their usefulness in the offense right now and how they've been utilized, is this what you've envisioned for them at this point of the season or maybe something more? They had both had excellent football games on Saturday night. That, that's the one thing I would say. They were very uh, efficient in their blocking. They were very fundamental. They did a great job of attacking their defense. And you know what really was so interesting? I was, I was in a discussion with a recruit uh, this week, and one of the things I see, he said uh, something about the same comment about catches. I said, "Doggone defenses aren't cooperating. You know, they're, they're really taking us to other progressions, and the quarterback's giving the ball to the right guy." You know the bottom line is is this now we're really doing a great job with uh you know with with hitting everyone in our offense exploiting the offense and, you know we're running the ball well inside we're running the ball well outside we're hitting real running backs in the pass game we're hitting tight ends in the pass game hitting the deep ball and that's what offense is all about take what the defense will give you and continue to excel at it yeah uh so a recruiting follow-up then when that's interesting that you say the recruit brought that to your attention uh, when the catches aren't there for you to point to when you're trying to entice a recruit. Can you tell us more about that conversation, what you tried to now, Obviously, it, just, it wasn't in a, in a negative sense. Yeah. I don't want to have any explanation of that. And, and obviously, the recruiting will be very careful. The whole idea is just to go ahead and listen. We're going to play our offense. Things equal out. It's a 12-game season. Those guys are playing great. When the ball gets to them, they're going to execute what they have to do. And, and uh, you know, the calls were there. Just that, I, you know, the defense didn't cooperate. They made some good calls, too. Front row, Bill. Go over a bit of what's the statue. Can you compare how different the offense is right now in terms of close, how close it is to its potential a year ago? Well, I think it's one thing, and maybe it's, I don't know, I don't know factually what it is, but the, the explosive play factor seems to be greater this year right now. You take the first three games, there's a tremendous amount of explosive plays. And when you look at it in that terms, the one thing that we want to have on offense is obviously have no turnovers and have explosive plays. That formula is you know, it's like 85, 90, 95% win formula when you take college football across the board. And if you're winning the turnover battle and you're winning explosive plays, you're only going to win games. That's what I kind of sense right now is we're doing a great job in the explosive play category. And, uh, you know, one of the things we did uh, Saturday, I thought a lot better than game one and two, is we had some more consistent drives when we didn't have the explosive play. And we really played well in the second half. And that's the part that, uh, you know, obviously we were lacking a little bit in the first few games also. And, and we came out and we just were able to execute our offense all through the game. Really, I thought it was really kind of cool late in the game. We kind of slowed it down. And then all of a sudden, we just get first downs, first downs, and pounding it out. So we really had the offense working on all phases. You, uh, you guys are obviously in your second year as a staff. How much more in sync are you as a staff knowing having that yeah, that's come come really naturally you know you get an opportunity to to do what we do and you sit in those rooms every day and you ask questions to each other and you look at game plans and there's certainly more continuity about what's the next move they do this so let's do that kind of you know discussions and and it isn't you know we're all on the same page and you know i sit beside tom every day in, in the press box or every game in the press box and one thing you know, I kind of know what he wants to hear and why he wants to hear it. And so those suggestions are kind of geared one direction. And I know from uh, from Coach Meyer, he's throwing things out there, and Coach Warner throwing in Coach Drake and Coach Smith. So there is a lot more continuity to that, and it comes with maturity of the staff. Great. Rusty? Uh, Rusty Miller, AP. Coach, uh, usually a lot of coaches will say when you're playing Michigan or USC or Texas, you don't have to worry about a whole lot of motivation. The players know it. Do you have to work a little bit harder this week when you're playing an FCS team? You know, the one thing I told uh, my guys today, it's an interesting question, is that I said, listen, this week is, and really every week is like this, and I don't want to downplay any opponent you ever play, because this week is about us. Where is our improvement level at our position? And that's what I told my position guys is, you know, this is a challenge of us. How do we get better at the things that we can still do better? How do we improve our fundamentals? How do we improve our techniques? How do we get faster on game day? How do we play at a faster tempo? How do we execute the little minute things that, you know, you you, you really don't know what we're trying to do unless you, you understand the play call and the defense behind it. And how do we do that better? Because every week, if we do that really, really well, we don't have turnovers, our odds of winning are pretty good. So it, it really is, it comes down to, you know, they can run, you know, a three-four scheme, a, you know, an odd stat scheme, a four-down scheme, they can run whatever they want. 
But bottom line is, how well do we do what we need to do? And normally, the, the you know the odds are in our favor that we do a pretty good job and win the game. Very good, Tim. With uh, some of the plays you guys ran to get like Dontre Wilson to the edge, some of those jet sweeps outside and stuff. How important is it for your tight ends to block on the edge on plays like that? It seems like. Well, right. I tell you, that's where I said you know the, the catches weren't there, but I, I don't know if Jeff Hyman could have been happier. You know, I, I, he was unbelievably happy after the game because he blocked the perimeter like a champion. I mean, we did a great job. There's a, if you look at the game and you go back and watch it again, there's a lot of inside runs that our tight ends were able to get inside and dig out an inside linebacker or an outside linebacker trying to fit inside. Then all of a sudden we're running an outside play and we're pinning him inside. Then they tried to run outside and we got him pinned outside. And they really were frustrated at the end of the day, just couldn't figure out how to get around those tight ends. And they, and really, not only that, our wide receivers did a great job. I know Coach talked about Evan Spencer. I'm sure when the crack blocks and the things that we were able to do, it really was a great perimeter blocking day. And without it, those plays don't get outside. You can't run outside plays without great perimeter perimeter blocking, and that's one thing we did very, very well. And people I like to talk about the explosive potential of this offense, but it does seem like it, it may not always be there with throwing the ball if you guys are running with Jordan Hall, with Dontre, Carlos Hyde's coming back. It, those tight ends and, and receivers, I, they have to be ready to block a lot of the game, right? Absolutely. The one thing about offense, in, in anywhere you go, is, is the bottom line is you want to be able to attack a defense on a broad front. If you line up and start running one play consistently or one four, they have answers. Those guys are sitting in a room all day, too. And their players are on scholarship also. You have to be able to attack them on broad fronts. Like we're throwing the ball deep. We try to do some intermediate throws. We ran outside. We ran inside. We ran option. I mean, all those things, it's really, really hard to defense when you're guessing what will be the next call. And the players just aren't sure how to manage that next play. And that was one of the things you saw done very, very well. I thought Tom Herman did an excellent job of play calling and keeping it mixed up between inside, outside, deep ball, short ball, you know, bubble screen and those things. And I thought we did a great job in that game plan, and it was well executed by our players. Okay, Lori Schmidt, 97, quick on the fan. You have outscored opponents 68 to 14 in the first quarter, and the other quarter scoring margin hasn't been as close. I'm wondering if it's always a case of what you said happened against Cal, where you're intentionally trying to slow down the tempo, or whether there's something else at play there. Well, you know, that's a great stat. I didn't know. I knew it was high. I didn't know the exact figure on it. You know, it's not intentional. I, I know a couple of the other games, uh, it was a little bit of probably uh, lack of focus sometimes on the players and not finishing their, their technique and fundamental. I don't think the play calling really changed. I know there was a couple of series in the game, and you know, we even huddled. You know, how many times have you seen Ohio State huddle this year? You know, in the fourth quarter of that game, we started, you know, we were huddling a little bit and coming together. We wanted to, we had that lead, you know, and, and it's in the game and we're great. Uh, and, and so the idea was, yes, there's times that we want to do that. But the whole thing is, is we got to be good four quarters because, as you know, every game, you know, your opponent's going to continue to get better. And then every week it's going to get tougher and people get to know who you are as an offense. and. And so we want to score consistently in all four quarters. And, you know, the nice thing is I thought our kids did a great job of, of really playing great four quarters last week. Back in the middle, all right. Coach, I think the progression of Jeff Hyreman has been well documented. But when you look at his just growth from last year, I mean, what do you point to specifically? What do you see in just terms of how he's progressed? Well, the one thing here at Ohio State is we have a phenomenal strength staff. And, and when you look at what they've done in the speed development, you look at his strength and you know, you look at Jeff's numbers in the weight room, they're off the charts. I mean, he's really, really a phenomenal athlete. And, and he, you know, I think he leads the team in vertical jump and bench press. I mean, that's not very often that a tight end does that. If not, he's like second or third in vertical jump. And I, I think he is number one in bench press. So when you look at those numbers, it, it's kind of amazing to have a kid that's 6'5 and, you know, 255 pounds that can do that. The other thing about it is he, he really started taking the game more seriously in the classroom. He, he focuses in on what needs to get done and, uh, on the film, what, what he needs to look at. He understands, you know, last year he's watched film like almost like a TV spectator. You know, you're, oh, I like the ball. Oh, that was a nice play. Now they're looking at it, hey, is the backer gap exchange and how's the safety come down and rotate? You know, what's the end, how's the end of line me, line to me when I'm in those different alignments? and. And those are the things that when you get really good and what we, we want them to do is they can look at film, understand it better, be better in the classroom. And the last part of it, Jeff, there's no one on our football team, and there's a lot of guys who do a great job, 
There's no one on our football team that does a better job of taking care of their body than Jeff Iron. You know, when I say that, I mean, he's in working his legs and treating and contrasting and eating right and, and drinking the right things. And, I mean, he works really hard because college football is a grind, and it's a really hard season, and, and he's going to play a lot of plays. And he does a phenomenal job of making sure his body's right on Saturday. How much enthusiasm do you see when he gets those outside, those blocks that help spring a guy like Don Trail? You said he did a very good job on those uh, in the game against Cal. I mean, how much pride does he take? I mean, even if he's not catching the ball. I hope a lot because really the ultimate thing is is win. And, and the one thing I'll say a ton ton of times in our room is, listen, it, it is you'll get yours if you win. No one gets anything if you lose. So let's go win. You know, let's do what we have to do to win the games. And it'll all sort itself out. And, and they take a lot of pride in it. We spend a lot of time blocking and a lot of time doing the things on the perimeter. And, and we really made some huge jumps from perimeter blocking this week. Second row middle, Dave. Tim, can you give an update on Marcus Ball? How's he coming along? You know, Marcus is, 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 is uh, coming along really well. He, he just, the, the honest truth is, he hasn't caught the ball as well as we want him to at this point in the year. He's a very athletic kid. He does really well, uh, you know, on the field that way. But uh, he just hasn't caught the ball as cleanly as he needs to and consistently. And as he learns that skill, um, he'll, be, he'll be okay. I mean, he'll, he, he'll do well here. Uh, he, we knew coming in he was more of a wide receiver tight end than a tight end. So his blocking skills obviously need to improve yet. But uh, he hasn't caught the ball as cleanly as he needs to. And I'll guarantee you that's been emphasized in a certain room. Is there is, uh, you know, a quick follow-up? Is there a chance you'll redshirt him? Or is that, it's too you know what? We, you know, Coach Meyer at Plus, we, we, we don't redshirt anyone. We'll play who's needed, needed to play that week. And, you know, we'll see how that goes. And obviously we've had no discussions with him about, about that. Back to the right, Clay. I know you probably play all ABC six. You probably wouldn't do this in the heat of a battle, Coach. But at some point, will you nudge Herman in the ribs and say, "Can you throw my guys a bone?" Oh no, you know what? I never would. Uh, and it's it's funny because really, if you look at it in the game plan, it, it, there were calls that were designated to do that. That's why I said the dog on defense didn't cooperate. You know, they played a lot of quarters, and not to talk you know real football stuff, they played a lot of quarters and. They really played man quarters on the tight end most of the day, where he came down and played man, locked up on a little bit, and, and uh, kind of a little surprising, you know, how they played that a few times to me, and, and that's okay. You know, the ball went elsewhere. Matter of fact, two of the long scores were actually balls that I thought would end up to the tight end. They didn't, uh, which is, you know, listen, I don't know if you noticed that one time Jeff would run down the field and get real excited. Well, uh, touchdowns are fun, you know, since you're on the road, and, and when, when three quarters of the state is still Ohio State fans, how cool is that, huh? Uh, front row, Tim. Tim May Clumps, especially, Tim. Uh, take, take me inside y'all's offensive meeting room last, last week and this week as you prepare. Yet you don't know whether five is going to be available or not, Braxton Miller. And again, this week, how, how do y'all deal with that? You know, the, the, the truth of it is, and I, it's so funny, you, you, it's a great question in fact that I came up to Coach Herman prior to the game and I said something to him in the hotel I said you know this is I've been coaching a long time well over 30 years and, and the one thing that I've never went into a game uh, ever where you weren't nervous about your backup quarterback having to start everybody's coach has known you're at times some people there's injuries and your number two's got to go in and there was more calm and more confidence than ever I've ever been around and the beauty of it is um, we know that He's very capable. Kenny's going to come in and do a phenomenal job, and our, our teams respect him. And, you know, if Braxton Miller's in there, we're going to go play really hard and do really well. And Kenny Guyton's in there, we're going to go play really hard and do really well. And, and uh, you know, you just, you know, the game is made the next man in mentality. You know, hey, who, who's the next man in? And, you know, it's called competitive excellence around here and, you know, power of the unit, which if somebody is down, if it's Jeff and, you know, Hireman down, Nick Manette's got to go in and play you know, better than Jeff Ironman, and that's our, our rules, and that's how we do it around here, and, and uh, that's something that's really uh, driven home with Coach Meyer. It doesn't matter who it is, competitive excellence, the next guy goes in the game, you, you better be ready to play at a higher level than the guy who just came out. You watch the video on the game one else. Do you see Kenny seeing stuff? I mean, are you amazed that he sees? Yeah, you know, it's funny because if, if you really are here the length of time that Kenny's been here and you do a good job in the classroom, the game slows down for you. You know, and that's a great thing about experience, and that's the one thing that sometimes left out is, you know, that you know, no, no offense to Kenny, he's not a freshman or a young sophomore that's been thrown into this battle. You know, he's been here a while. 
and he's been to a lot of meetings, he's been to a lot of spring practices, he's seen a lot of coverages, he's been around a lot of the situation, and the beauty of that is, that's what you hope experience does for you. Uh, and, and that's one of the things I think he does bring home, it's one of the things he's done a phenomenal job of, and he does see it very well. But he has a lot of experience behind the scenes, maybe not the actual game reps that some other people have, but it, you know, most of the time you start bringing that young guy in, he's a freshman or a sophomore. It's a whole different game. Last question down front, Tom. Tim, top four with Kenny Ruff. Heard him mention that he has a good conversation about possibly using Kenny and Braxton on the field at the same time this week. When you look at what you guys are doing offensively, do you guys have a fine line between maybe not fixing what's not, you know, you don't fix what's broken uh, and getting over creative in terms of keeping what you guys got going on? That, that's, it, it's a, yeah, that's a great question, and it is a consistent battle between not trying to fix what's not broken and trying to make, you know, and then looking at it, well, what didn't work? And then ask yourself, why didn't it work? And not like panicking about why that, whatever that play was, whatever that series was or formation, why didn't it work? Because most of the time when you look at it, you know, there, there's a certain play in the game on Saturday that, uh, you know, if, if we could have just got a, an offensive line to get up a little bit more on the backside backer, we ran a play only one time in the game, and, and it looked like it was a little cloudy, and the play only went for two. But if you look at it now and you turn on the video, which is the luxury of running back and forth, dang, there's something we could have done. that We could have ran that play maybe five, six times and had great results. So it is a fine line, you know, not to panic and just keep running the same things. And the one thing, you, you, even though the offense looks like it's more adverse, you know, the idea is we're running plays that we started in the beginning of summer camp, all the way to now, over and over and over and over again. And football's a game of repetition. You get really good at what you do all the time because defenses can make a lot of adjustments, but our kids understand their adjustments better. And that's what offense is all about, is be able to make those adjustments on the run because there's a lot of chaos on game day. There's a lot of things going on. When you're a spread offense, you, know, you can never really walk in a game and this is exactly how they'll line up <coughs> because they're going to have to attack us in different ways. All right, thank you, Coach. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you.